When something's wrong with your stomach, you go to the doctor. When something's wrong with your mind, you don't. Okay, so I have good news and bad news. The good news is today we're gonna tackle something that affects people regardless of their race, gender, class, religion, or sexual orientation. Hooray! The bad news, that thing is mental health stigma, which often prevents people from getting the help that they need. The opposite of hooray! So considering that about one in five Americans deal with mental health issues, let's look at some of the stigmas that need to go. Stigma number one. Only those kind of people have issues. Let's see if any of these sound familiar. Mental health issues? That's an excuse for losers. Yeah, except Cara Delevingne has openly talked about her issues with anxiety, and David Beckham has talked about his OCD. So an incredibly successful model actress and one of the planet's best athletes are losers? Clearly, having mental health issues doesn't mean you can't be successful. Fine, fine, but we all know mental health problems are really white problems. Except Kid Cudi, Alicia Keys, Kendrick Lamar, and Eva Longoria have all talked about their struggles with depression, so no. Okay, but when teenagers say that stuff, they're clearly exaggerating. Well, except that Demi Lovato has opened up about how she's had suicidal thoughts as early as age seven and was diagnosed with bipolar disorder at 19. Look, over 40 million Americans suffer from mental health conditions every year. And these issues can happen to you whether you're black, white, Asian, Latino, attractive, unattractive, rich, poor, male, female, young, or old, which basically covers, you know, everyone. Stigma number two, having serious mental health issues makes you violent. Do mental health issues cause people to be violent? Short answer, no. Long answer, no. Research shows that people with mental health issues are no more likely to be violent than the general population, and that only three to 5% of violent acts in the US can be attributed to people living with serious mental illness. So why does this idea continue to stick around? Well, hacky Hollywood screenwriters can definitely take some of the credit for this one. From Hitchcock's Psycho to M. Night Shyamalan's Split, Hollywood loves to write about violent villains motivated by the mental health disorder du jour. One tiny problem with this trope is it's almost entirely backwards. People with severe mental illnesses are over 10 times more likely to be victims of violent crime than the general population. So to all current and aspiring Hollywood screenwriters, please do your homework, okay? Thanks. Stigma number three. This stuff isn't real, you just need to snap out of it. Well, first of all, don't you think if people suffering from mental health issues could just snap out of it, they would? Most psychiatric disorders develop, at least in part, due to an underlying genetic predisposition and or a chemical imbalance within the brain. And what makes mental health issues difficult is, unlike, say, a broken leg, the symptoms may not always be visible to the untrained observer. But that doesn't mean they're not real. So just like you wouldn't tell someone with a broken leg to just walk it off, People can't just shake off conditions like depression. Now, of course, the flip side of this is stigma number four. All you really need is love. Well, I'm not gonna badmouth love because for many people with mental health issues, the love of family and friends is a big part of recovery, but it's not a cure-all. For example, the popular series 13 Reasons Why is a story of uncovering the reasons why a depressed young girl committed suicide. In it, we hear heartbreaking lines like, I cost a girl her life because I was afraid to love her, and we all killed Hannah Baker. Which, no, I can give you a hundred reasons why neither of those things are true. Hollywood, we just talked about this. Look, we should always aim to love and care for people going through a hard time. But people with serious mental health issues, such as severe depression, and by the way, 90% of people who commit suicide are suffering from mental health issues, need professional help, and sometimes they need medication. As much as you'd like to, you can't just love someone out of depression or post-traumatic stress disorder. Which brings us to stigma number five. There's no cure for mental health issues. Well, that's not really true. For many mental health disorders, even some of the most severe, there are treatments that work and everyone's process is different. For me, I've managed my depression and anxiety through things like therapy, meditation, and fitness. But that doesn't mean I'm cured because that implies a total and complete reversal. And sometimes I still get depressed, but now I have tools to work through it which is why professionals prefer the term recovery, because mental health is a process. And here's the thing, if you think you need help to find a better mental space, go for it. There's absolutely no shame in asking for help. And if you or someone you know is struggling with mental health issues, check the description box for links to resources at MTV's Look Different and their partnership with Half of Us. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in two weeks right here on Decoded.